hasn't happened yet in terms of the exotic animals. Are you A, concerned that it might not happen with this governor, and B, we might have a new governor, and would that be, um, uh, would he be responsible or liable to have a hold to that agreement? Yeah. <clears throat> well, we are very pleased that uh, Governor Strickland uh, has taken on this issue and has pledged to have a strong uh, law that forbids keeping of newly acquired agents and dog animals. Uh, my hunch is uh, he's waiting for right after the election and is going to handle it then. And uh, uh, I've received several assurances from the governor's office that uh, they're going to get it done as they pledged uh, by the end of the year, which is the which is the uh, end date for the agreement. Um, I, I'm not sure that it will be completed through the process by the end of the year. I'm confident that it will be launched. Uh, but, you know, I do want to say that, you know, this is an entirely nonpartisan issue. It is, uh, it is an issue that every sensible person should support. Uh, it's a shame that it, that, that it took um, us this long to get to a policy that, I mean, when Tim speaks and when Mike speaks about these circumstances, I mean, uh, it's shocking that this has not been handled before this point. Other questions? Just let me follow up again. Yeah. If, perchance, the governor did not get that done by the end of the year, do you think Governor Kasich, if it were to be him, would be, would be beholden? Would he be have to follow through on this agreement? Well, the, uh, I think the... The issue for us is that we stated when the agreement was announced in this building that we wanted to see all of these reforms advanced by the end of the year. Um, and if they were, then we would not proceed with the farm and welfare ballot measure. And I think that if any one of these elements is not um, agreed to, that violates the agreement. It's just that simple. It's not a threat. It's just those are the terms of the agreement. And, um, you know, that would apply I think, to any governor, you know, and I think that the agricultural groups, uh, you know, would would want to see all, all of the terms um, advanced as we all publicly pledged. So I would hope that um, whether it's Strickland or Kasich, that they would be equally committed. What progress do you see has been made on the other parts of that agreement? <clears throat> Well, the uh, Ohio Livestock Care Standards Board is uh, you know, deeply immersed in many of these elements, and there were five provisions related to farm animal welfare. There was a phase out for gestation crates, field crates, a moratorium on new battery cage operations, and then there was a uh, proposal on humane euthanasia of animals on the farm, and then uh, no transport and sale of downer cows. Uh, the Livestock Care Center Board has um, made progress on a number of these. They're not done yet. They've made a lot of progress on the uh, on the uh, euthanasia and downer provisions as well as the pigs. Uh, there's a debate happening on the deal. I don't even understand why we're debating that. That should be the easiest of them. And then on the egg piece, uh, the administration did deny a permit for um, an enormous egg factory farm um, in uh, Union County, uh, the high Q facility. So uh, that was consistent with the terms of the agreement that no uh, big operation would, uh, would land in Ohio. So I think we're making progress on the on the two legislative elements. Uh, you know, the thought was to handle them in the late of session, so that we will. We will be advocating for it, and uh, we've already spoken to lawmakers in both chambers about moving forward on felony level penalties for cop fighting and then stronger standards for puppy mills. If any of the elements of the agreement are not followed through on, would you be seeking a ballot issue next year? Well, I think we'd have to, you know, look at the terms. You know, it's not a formula, but the, but the, the standard was that we would progress uh, with all eight elements of the agreement. And I know John Diamond is on the board for Ohio's Humane, for Humane Farms, and uh, I think he would agree, as the other board members have said, that we want progress on all of these elements. Um, and 
you know, it's not as if anyone's doing a favor for us. These are just good policies for the state of Ohio. They're good policies on animal welfare. And just like the exotics, I mean, as I say, when, when Tim <coughs> and Mike speak, and of course, uh, to, to know what happened to Brent and to hear the deer truck, I mean, can anyone argue with the, with the merits of these policies? I haven't heard one good argument against any of these policies. Not one good argument. Have you collected any more signatures since the agreement was announced? No, we said that we would put the petition drive in advance until um, you know, the year ended. Um, but if we did need to revive it, which we all hope we do not, uh, because the best way to handle these issues is through the, the Ohio Livestock Care Standards Board, the legislature, and the governor's office, uh, we wouldn't need to gather many additional to qualify. And that would just be a question of whether we aim for the 2011 ballot or the 2012 ballot. But we, um, we don't want to be there. And uh, you know, we take all of the participants um, in this agreement at their, at their word. And no one has uh, retreated in any public way from these pronouncements. They've all indicated that, that we're going to get there. And uh, we're confident because, again, it's I, I, I believe the ballot measure would have passed. I mean, I'm surprised, frankly, to be here. Uh, you know, just before the election, when you had asked me six months ago, would I be here speaking about exotics? No, I would have thought I'd be talking about farm animal welfare. Uh, but this opportunity came along, and it's the right policy for Ohio on all these issues. Absolutely the right policy. And what happened to Deirdre and Branch never happened again. I mean, if you just take that issue of human safety alone, it grounds the policy. Why should Tim have to chase these animals around the Indian counties of Ohio? I mean, why should he have to wrestle with a cougar and put himself at risk? This man gets no remuneration for this. He does it because he cares. But the issue puts himself at risk and cleans up the mess that other people